All right, good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good to see your smiling faces. We're glad you're here with us to celebrate the goodness of God together. Um, before we start, um, we're super excited to have Danny, our children's director. She's going to share here in a few minutes. <clears throat> but before she does, I just wanted to address what took place yesterday in Charlottesville, um, Virginia. And, um, you know, when something like that happens, it's real ugly. And, and really, at base, it's demonic. It's very evil. And from Bismarck, North Dakota, when we see stuff like that happens, we can feel um, on the other, you know, halfway across the country here, like, what do we do about it? If you, if you saw yesterday, there was a bunch of community leaders and ministers, they got together and they locked arms without weapons and they walked and got in front of the militia that was there with guns and body armor and they just stood there and, you know, some of them prayed and, and they just were not, they just stood up. Um, for what is right. And obviously, we're not probably going to fly to Charlottesville and, and do that, but we can do something. <clears throat> God, has he doesn't leave us helpless and hopeless in these scenarios, but we do have to apply what he says we're supposed to apply, which is prayer. So if you yesterday um, watched that unfold and you felt the anger stir up in you. The Bible says be angry and not sin. We can, if we're not careful, we can fall into the same trap of hate that those people are exhibiting there. So we have to be careful that what we see there doesn't justify our own hate and we become just like them. That's not the goal. God's goal is for us to embrace his spirit and the power of spirit through, through prayer to tear down these spiritual principalities that are revealing themselves, that are trying to take root and trying to say they have a right to take authority over these minds and these hearts and these situations. And that's just not God's plan. God's plan is for us to exercise our faith, to pray against those things. So we're going to do that together. So would you guys just bow your heads and we'll, we'll say a prayer for Charlottesville. God, we come to you and as we watch a heinous... Um, event like that take place we can feel helpless or hopeless and yet we know that is not how you have created us and that's not who you are and so God we come together as a church family and we agree and we target our prayers to that area and we pray in the power of your spirit that you will tear down those spiritual principalities that you will replace this evil with good that you will bring about love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, or that that place that has been hit with something evil will become a place known for your goodness and your glory, that it will be a light to our country. So, God, we pray that you will flip this right side up according to your kingdom, that you will manifest yourself in the minds and the hearts and dreams and visions in the lives of people that are so broke that they can think that this is okay. But God, we know it's not about us arguing with them. It's about the power of your spirit going in and changing in a heart and a mind that is so desperately needed. So Lord, we again, we agree together in prayer, exercising our faith according to your word. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So in this series that we're doing called Family Circus, you have a handout there you can take a look at. As we've been covering topics about families, this is probably one of the most important uh, series that we've ever done and, and could do because of what is happening in our country, how family is just being pulled at, to be pulled apart, to be destroyed. And that's a work of the devil. He wants to kill the fabric of family. He wants to destroy it. And so that's why it's so important for us to understand God's principles and God's plan and to apply especially through the power of prayer. So our phrase for 2017 is invest to expand. In every noon service, we have one of our up-and-coming and one of our ministers and one of the folks that uh, are requesting to share and that we feel called to share. And so we've had a bunch of people um, over the last several months, and we're going to continue to do that. And so today, I'm super pumped to have Danny Mazalowski with us. So everybody, welcome Danny. She is our awesome, one of our awesome children's directors and just does a phenomenal kids uh, with the kids. And so as we prepare for this, I'm super excited because she's just got a beautiful heart. And so get to shine it through. So Love go you. get him, Tiger. Okay. okay. Well, my beautiful heart is 
going like this. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> oh my goodness, it was it was pumping right here, and then I stepped on stage, and I'm like, ooh, peace. But then it came back again. So can we <laughs> can we pray? Can we pray? Can we do that? And I just want to come to you guys with full humility. I am I'm such a noob. I need Christ so bad. And if I have a word for you guys and God wants to share it, I mean, that's a privilege. So in full humility, let's just pray together um, because I need it as just as much as you guys do. So, God, we are here for you today. Thank you for your children and their humility to come here and listen. Please, with my words that are yours, help everyone's faith be built up and strengthened so that they can fight this good fight for you. Uh, we love you. Quiet my soul. Make me have peace. <laughs> we love you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay, you guys. Here we go. Um, my name is Danielle Monzalaski. I've had that name for like a year now. My husband's back in the booth. Yeah. Eric. <laughs> yes, marriage. It deserves that clap. Because, man, it's not easy. No, no, sir. <laughs> it's not easy. We just realized, oh, wait, yeah, this first year was awfully hard. We didn't even know it. It's very sneaky. Um, so, yeah, I get the privilege, like, every Sunday, all three services, I get to be back there with your kids. Um, and it is the best thing. We have a great time, not just having fun, but when the lesson hits and when the kids are saying, oh, this is boring, I have to sit down, they, they say that, but they engage they sit, they listen, and my favorite part at the end of the time is question time. And we sit and we just huddle together, and they have the most amazing questions, you guys. They are curious, they are hungry, and you guys are doing a good job. You're doing a good job just by bringing them here, and I get the privilege of just trying to answer their questions and love on them for one hour a week. You guys have the hard work to do. I just get the, I just get to have fun. Anyways, but... Um, I just want to share your, my heart with you guys today, um, because this whole topic of family, uh, it's not easy, um, and we can't pretend it is, especially to our kids. One thing that I've learned to be, it's very important to be real with the children. It's very important to acknowledge the messy family that many of them are in, and to acknowledge past abuse, to acknowledge hurt, to acknowledge pain. And to find God in all these things, you can't, you can't sugarcoat it, you guys. They already know. They already know. Because uh, we talked about how Jesus turned water into wine. This is just an example. And the conversation turned to them talking about adults getting drunk. <laughs> they were like, and I had no part in it. We just explained how wine is not like grape juice. And they know, guys. They know real life. They know. we got to be real with them. And so... Um, because life is messy, a lot of you guys can look at this word family and um, feelings bubble up like um, bitterness, um, coming from a home of brokenness, coming from a home where your spouse left you alone, where your father left when you were a child, where your children have turned away from the Lord. This is a real thing, and there's lots of fear there's lots of bitterness, and we have to acknowledge that because the world is screaming its fear out, and it's reaching out because it's full of fear. And I see a lot of my friends, they, they have a vow almost in them to never have children because of their past. They vow to not have children because of many fears that they have. So I want to address the fears that people have because they are asking these big questions. Everyone's asking these huge questions um, why have children? That's the first thing. This is the big question. Why even have children? Because I, I, I know it's awful for me to be asking that. I'm the children's director. Everything's great all the time. It's not annoying. It's never hard. It's never just like tiring. Never. I question why have children in this broken world? Why bring these wonderful things into it? People have, who's had that question before? I just wanted to know. I want to know. Cool. Not alone. I can guarantee the world has had this question. And they ask these questions out of fear, you guys. We must join them in asking these questions out of faith. We have to. We have to join them or else they're lost. And so my favorite verse, my life verse, I encourage you to have multiple. But this is one of the very few verses I've memorized, to be honest. <laughs> But it's 2 Timothy 1.7. I don't even know the numbers yet. I have to look. 
oh, but God has definitely helped me with this. The one translation says, for God is not the author of fear. He's not the author of confusion. This says, for God has not <laughs> given us, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Guys, we have a sound mind. We can ask these hard questions. We have the power of the spirit. We have the love of the father. And who gives the spirit of fear? Our enemy, okay? We have so much good stuff to fight this battle, and it's a good battle. So, and I encourage you also to just read that whole chapter, that whole book of Timothy. It just is telling us our charge, our, our duty to, to do our duty for the world, to just give them all that we have. So always read the full Bible. Another thing I want to say before I continue, don't take my word for anything. I'm up here, but I'm a noob. Like, I'm up here, but I want you guys to not just listen with an open mind, but listen and learn with an open Bible. Go home after this. Just do detective work, I tell the kids. Always do detective work. And so I love you guys, and I, I'm speaking truth, but you got to confirm it in your home. So let's ask these hard questions with faith. Why have children? Why have children? Why? See? So we have to ask these hard questions because everyone is asking these out of fear. One fear, one fear, fear number one um, that a lot of people have is they're afraid my child will get hurt. This is very valid if you look at this wicked world. Children get hurt. We got hurt. Fear number two that's also valid is I'm afraid I will hurt my child from the abuse I've experienced, from the exploitation I've experienced. I fear I will hurt them the same way I was hurt. Uh, fear number three, um, my child will hurt others. There is a fear that my child will not just be a victim of the world, but the next villain. And I've heard my, I've heard my friends speak this way, and they're full of fear. <sighs> so that's no good. Because if we, if we let this fear grip us, if, we re if, if, if everyone has this fear, and we let it grip us and control us, um, all of us, one day we would all decide not to have children. So this is, this is I like to play mind games and philosophize. Um, <laughs> so if one day we all decided and got gripped by this fear and had no more children, wow, the world would be desolate. The last days on earth full of death, no elderly would get care, no hope would continue. There would be more evil and more violence surviving. That would be obsolete. So obviously the solution is to have children, keep having children. So we have to do detective work. Let's do that. And you can take notes. That's my favorite. So let's destroy this with a sound mind, the sound mind we have, okay? Let's do this. Uh, Ephesians 2, again, it's the best to just read the whole Bible in its entirety and it's all of its context. We're going to take this big old chunk together. Let's start here. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All, all of us. All of us, all of us also lived among them at one time, ratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. When you come to understand the enormity of the thought of God's wrath, he is just and it cannot be around disobedience, and when he tells us that all of us used to live this way, we were children of wrath. Every one of us. Every one of us. And it doesn't feel nice. And I purposely want to sit in this feeling for a moment. Because this is the feeling our world has right now. Hopelessness. Deserving of wrath. In a world that is wicked. So this section of Ephesians 1-3, through 3, it describes our curse. You cannot deny we have a curse. Is there not war? 
Is there not poverty? Is there not wickedness? Corrupt leaders? This is true. And the Bible is so good at explaining things for us. And it's wonderful. Um, so, so the curse is real. So why have children if the curse is real? If the curse is real, why, why have more children of wrath? Hard question, guys. We've got to keep asking it. The Bible has hope. Hallelujah. Let's keep reading the word. But, but, it's my favorite word, including every four-year-old boy's favorite word. <laughs> but. Someone described this word, the B-U-T, one T, described it as a word that has the power to erase everything that was said prior. This is a powerful word. But, because of his grace, because of his grace, ooh, great, sorry, sorry. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God not only made us alive, but he raised us up with Christ and he seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages, and I thought it was very important to emphasize, that's now, <laughs> that's now, the coming ages, that's now, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God, not by works, so no one can boast it's a popular verse, but it goes on. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, plural, which God prepared in advance for us to do. It's his will that we all are rescued. It is his will that the curse is broken and that all of his children are rescued to turn away from wickedness and do good works. It is simple, you guys. It's rather simple. So this, this is the great purpose perspective shift that only the Bible is able to do. It's a shift of perspective from the world to eternal. And this is what we have to do daily to help our world out. Because it's, it's a fleeting life. And if we stay in that perspective, it leads to death. And so, let's see, how do I go? We're back on track. Why have children? That wasn't hard. <laughs> Why have children? Because God does not have, he has this plan that encompasses all of us. It is his will that all of us are saved. Your children are the light of the world. Your children are the hope of the world. We are the hope of the world because of what Jesus did. So I want to address those who grew up in the church from their beginnings. Um, there's this thing that I felt deeply. Um, I had testimony envy. Someone would come up and they would share their testimony, how they were addicted and brutalized and they were born again. And I had envy. And I would hear calling envy. I would feel calling envy too. I would feel, I would hear someone say, yes, I was called to Uganda to build wells. And I'd be envious. Um, but we need not to be envy because our calling is all the same. We've been called out of darkness into light. We are born again to bear children who are born again, to save the children who are the walking dead. Until Jesus comes again, as he promised, it doesn't matter how you do it. Day by day, teaching of the truth does it. Love, it does it. So, and Jesus valued children. He valued them immensely. Remember, let the children come to me. And anyone who hinders the children, not good stuff would happen. He values children because he knows that if we get to them when they're here, that is a whole soul that has a life ahead of them to go, do good works and to help others know Jesus. 
he loves saving his big kids too. From, I like to say, from 1 to 92, like the Christmas song. Kids from 1 to 92. We're all his kids. We're all kingdom kids. But wow, the value of a young soul set free at an early age to understand the voice of God, to know the value of his word, to listen to him, and to go where he calls. Wow. So, let's answer this question. With Psalm, wait, did, I, did I put Psalms 120? No, I didn't, but it's here. <laughs> God says that children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring are a reward from him. They're a gift, you guys. You got seven kids, you got seven blessings. Okay, not just to help with the housework, but to minister to you. You'll be old ones. You'll be old soon. And uh, they're there to minister to you. I know my mom and I are now friends. I was once her child, but now we're friends, and we minister to each other. She's a blessing to me. I'm a blessing to her. So, same with my father. I had, the, I had the absolute blessing of growing up in a Jesus-filled home that just believed in the continual transformation of a life through Jesus Christ, and it just gets better every day, every day. And so, Proverbs 2, 22, 6, because if we start children off on the way they should go, even when they are old, they will not turn away from it. And this takes faith, you guys. This takes fear, it takes faith over fear. We have, to, we have to love and teach our children in the belief that God will touch them one day, God will encounter them one day, and they will be a blessing to the world. It takes faith. Remember that verse that everyone learned? John 3.16. John 3.16 is for real, you guys. And it's amazing to just put into perspective. You knew this as a child. Imagine the truth of God that was seated in you just by memorizing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It goes on. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. To save the world. So, first, remember that you are God's child. Start with yourself. Do you believe in what he did? Because he did it for you. He did it for me. He took the wrath of God and put it on himself. And I don't deserve it. He's so good. So start with yourself. Believe in what he did. Then start with your children. Pray for them. Teach them. Give them put them in places of influence, like a church like a grandma who loves the Lord. Let them encounter. If you don't have a father that is, if you don't have a spouse, like a father who left, pouring into your child, this church is full of men of God who want to fill that gap. And especially the father in heaven who wants to fill that gap for all of us. Because I do believe that all of us have daddy issues. I really do think. You look down, we all have daddy issues. But the Father wants to fill those gaps for us and do the most work in us and to fulfill us in Christ. And so start with your children, then every other child, one from 92, especially those who have been hurt, who have been exploited, who have been victims, because those are the people that the devil thinks he's got for good. And our job is to bring the light of Jesus into the world, and your kids are doing it. They're already doing it. It's little seven-year-olds praying for this little four-year-old who doesn't know why he's so hurt. I see it every week. They know how to be light for the world. So you're doing a good job. You honestly are. And so now that we know why we have children, because they're the hope of the world, and they're a gift from God, and they're a blessing to the ages, I want to speak to those parents who are in the trenches right now because I have developed a heart for you even though I have not become a parent myself I get to witness the pain and the hardship and the frustration of raising a child 
I don't know the beginning of it, but I've d developed a heart for you. I forced myself. I forced myself to get passionate for you guys. So you, you can love your child like Jesus did. You are able to teach them the truth. You are capable of it. God, God's going to help you. That's what he does. It's his job. Your kids, no matter if they are the craziest, they don't even listen, they're the light of the world too. They have that full potential in Jesus Christ to be that. So believe that. Your kids are a gift from God. I know it doesn't feel that way most days. They are a gift, a blessing, a blessing for the ages. And you got to pray for them. You got to tell them that you believe in their full potential in Jesus Christ. Not that they're, don't just leave it at, you're special. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Fill it with the full truth. You were knit in my womb, and Jesus knows every hair on your head. He's given you gifts and talents that he wants to use. He loves you. You're not only special, but he calls you by name. He loves you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. It's the full truth of that which is in Jesus. And so, I would like to end on something Jesus said, because that's like the best thing you can do. Just go with what he said. This, this whole thing, this whole talk, it happened before he was taken away and beat and prepared for death. He said these things to encourage his people. And I want to encourage you guys today, just like he did. I have told you these things so that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen? Amen. We have hope. We have faith, and that trumps all fear. And so that is all I have for you guys. That's it. Amen. <laughs>Awesome, before you run off stage here. <clears throat> so you, speaking from experience with, even though you're not, like you said, a parent, you are with our kids every day, or every, every <laughs> Sunday and Wednesday. And so we just really appreciate your heart and your willingness to come up and share. <clears throat> but I wanna, <clears throat> excuse me, if you guys would all just pray with me for Danny, and especially as she leads with the kids ministry and the volunteers and all those helpers, she, if you've ever served back there, number one, thank you. And she would love to have you come and talk to her about serving. <clears throat> but we just, we can't do this in our human strength. This has got to be something that's done in the power of the Spirit. So we want to do just that one to pray for her. So would you guys extend your hands? We're going to pray for her. <clears throat> God, I just thank you for Danny and her willingness to share and <clears throat> what you have called her to be. First, she's your daughter, and, and that is just the, the most precious thing. But you also have given her a heart for your kids, which we know, as she said, you think very highly of children. And so we don't want to do this just in our own strength because we are limited in the amount of love that we can sh share. And so we want to be tapped into the limitless source of your spirit so we do, we just pray for her together. We agree for her and her other staff and the uh, other volunteers and all the helpers that minister to our children. We are so grateful for them, but we pray for them just for your spirit and every moment that they volunteer and serve and, and minister to those children, you multiply it back to them, whether it's rest or activities or hobbies or chores or whatever, you multiply it back to them and Lord, that your spirit will flow in and through them to do a work in every one of those kids' hearts that'll change destinies, that'll bring forth calling, that'll bring forth strength, maturity beyond their age, and that we will know it's not about our human effort, even though we want to offer our human effort, but we know it's by the power of your spirit working in us and through us. So Lord, we just pray for Danny as she leads, 
just give her a whole, new vision, new ideas, new strength. When she lays down even for a cat nap, supernatural strength. Uh, level the mountains and the before her. If there is any challenges, just level them and straighten the paths before her. Give her favor and uh, raise up, as your word tells us, the, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. We just pray that you will raise up people to help and serve in that area and open the doors, God, for, for that ministry to just flourish for your sake, for those kids' sake. And we trust it all to you, and we love you, and we love Danny. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, good job. Everybody give her a round of applause again and thank her. <clears throat> so <clears throat> she, uh, she is just phenomenal. I just love her, and she's just a little ball of energy. I just love it. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and Eric, her husband, just phenomenal. But uh, all of this stuff, when it comes to the family, is so important because our culture is just, like I said earlier, they're just being ripped at the fabric. And we, we have to combat that. <clears throat> and so a couple of things, ways to do that. Um, right over here, there'll be a prayer team. If you are, for whatever reason, you need prayer, don't leave without getting it. Sometimes the longest walk is from that chair to a prayer team. But if you need prayer, access it. That's what they're there for. Or maybe you're like, you know what, I need help in this journey, whether it's parenting or, or your family, finance, whatever it is. There's, there's, it's never hopeless and helpless. God's always got a plan. Right over here, there's a next step booth. <clears throat> if you need some helps and some next steps, we'd love to meet with you and kind of help you with some next steps. Also, if you would like to meet with a pastor, we have a phenomenal pastoral care team. Uh, Danny's dad is one of them. He's just phenomenal. If you want to meet with some, they would love to sit down with you and walk you through whatever it may be that you're going through and help um, guide and direct and nurture. And, and so, it's, again, it's not helpless. It's not hopeless. They're there for that purpose. <clears throat> and then lastly, in a family, parents, you know this, in a family, all the kids have chores. I have five kids. All five of them get chores. And none of them are without some. And in the church family, God parallels all the way out through the Bible, the blood family and the church family. In the church family, we all have chores. And if you are not serving in the body somewhere, we want to make that available to you. You can go online for any of this stuff, but you can go online, click the serve button, and we'll help you find a place to serve, whether it's in kids with Danny, or whether it's youth, or worship, or tech, or whatever. We will help you find a place to serve, because that's God's plan for all of us to serve in some way. So maybe it's, it's time, and you know it. It's like, I got I to gotta do something here. And if it's not, then just no pressure. But God will lead you. But we want to make that available to you. You can go online and click the serve button, and we'll help you get connected. <clears throat> all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pray over these Connect cards. And we do this every week because we, the, the faith that we exercise is so important. And God uses it. When we, when we pray, God responds. So would you guys extend your hands? We're going to pray over these Connect cards. <clears throat> God, we come to you, and as we have heard this message about prayer or about family and how important it is, and yet in and of our own strength, we fail. And so, God, we ask that in our failures, in our sin, in our shortcomings, that you will do what you do best. You will turn it around for good. Your word tells us that all things work together for good for those who are called according to your purpose. And our purpose is to be your children, to represent well, and in the areas where we lack, to invite your spirit to come and do a work. So we do. We lift up every one of these connect cards. We pray if it's physical healing, if it's relational stuff or financial stuff or whatever it is, God, we pray that you will manifest yourself, the king of glory that you, the host of heaven, will invade situations, stuff that's out of our control, and bring about your truth, bring about your goodness, your faithfulness, God. Bring about your solutions. And we will give you the praise and the glory for it. So God, we bring these to you. We lay them at your feet. We're so grateful that you haven't left us hopeless and helpless, that we can commit these things to you and know that you are going to respond and we thank you in advance for how you're going to work this. We trust it to you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right, so let's stand together. We'll close with our series verse. Make sure you come up and give Danny a high five, a hug, encourage her. 
um, as she continues to minister. All right, ready? Ready? Somebody said, yeah, okay, good. All right, here we go. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7. God bless you guys. Have a great week.